Good day, Nixers, and once again, welcome to the Aero Electronics series, where we explore the world of electronics from the ground up. In the previous video, we have discussed about the construction, operation, characteristics, and specifications of bipolar junction transistors, otherwise known as BJT. In that video, we have emphasized how a BJT can be used as an amplifier from a small base current to a high collector current. In this video, we will start the discussion by discussing about how to bias our transistor so that it will work as an amplifier. And then later on, we will transition to our main topic which is how to use a BJT as a switch. We will also discuss about the water overflow alarm system utilizing a BJT. Without further ado, let's start. start a discussion for this session, we will now explore how a battery or how a power supply and resistors will be connected to our transistor or to our BJT in order for it to work as an amplifier or as a switch. Okay? You may think about this biasing configuration as patterns, that when you see these kinds of patterns, you will be able to know whether this particular BJT is used as an amplifier or whether it is used as a switch, okay? And these configurations are, okay, the two supply emitter bias as shown here and voltage divider bias. So first of all, what, what is biasing? Okay. Biasing is the process of setting the transistor's DC operating voltage or current condition to the correct level so that AC input signal can be amplified correctly by the transistor. Basically, as what we have said earlier, these are patterns. Okay, that when you spot these patterns, okay, the connection of the supply and resistors to our transistor, we will be able to know or we will be able to identify whether this particular transistor is used as an amplifier or as a switch. Okay? So in this case, the two supply emitter bias, ganito yung kanyang forma. On the base side, we have this base resistor, RB, pero walang supply. It's directly connected to the ground. Okay? While on the collector side, okay, we have a VCC, meaning voltage supply on the collector. We have the resistor RC, collector resistor. And we have also the emitter resistor, RE. And we have also a supply voltage on the emitter, a negative supply voltage. And this is the two supply emitter bias. Now, how do we use this or when we spot this particular configuration, how is it used? It is used as an amplifier. Okay, meaning, pag nakakita tayo ng ganitong forma, okay, this particular transistor is used as an amplifier. For our explanation, we will be skipping the part of the calculations. Okay, we will just focus on the base bias configuration later. But, the characteristics of this particular configuration is actually it needs two supplies, positive and negative for supplies, the VCC and the negative VEE. It is also beta independent, meaning kung mapapansin natin dito sa calculations part, eh, wala tayong makikita dyan na beta value. Okay? So that's why sinabi, it is stated here, beta independent. It does not rely on the beta value. And it is actually used as an amplifier, meaning if we see this particular configuration, kung nakakita tayo ng ganito na forma, it's actually used as an amplifier. Okay? So the next configuration is what we call the voltage divider bias. Okay? In this case, we have four resistors, R1, R2, RC, and RE. Okay? So in this part, we have two resistors, R1 and R2 the collector resistor and the emitter resistor and we have only one okay, we have only one supply the supply on the collector is also the supply to our base okay now the characteristic it needs more resistors kung magpansin nga natin apat na resistor at the same time it is beta independent pa rin okay here we do not see 
sa calculation, so wala tayong makikita na beta. Okay? And it needs only one power supply. That's what we have discussed kanina. And again, this particular configuration, pag ganito yung forma, okay, it is used as an amplifier. Okay, this particular form can only be used as an amplifier. Okay? The third one is what we call the emitter bias. Ito naman yung forma niya. Pero lang tayong dalawang resistor. Okay? Dalawang resistor, dalawang supply. Okay? Collector resistor and the emitter resistor. The voltage okay, supplied to the base, VBB, and the voltage supplied to the collector, VCC. Okay? So, sabi dito, it has a fixed emitter current. Okay? So, yung emitter current natin. So, and it is still beta independent. Again, wala tayong makikita na beta on the calculation. And it is an IC driver. And it is used as an amplifier pa din. Okay? Now, the first three, yung binanggit natin kanina, that's the, the two supply emitter bias, the voltage divider configuration, and the emitter bias are actually all used okay, as an amplifier. Now, what about yung main topic natin ngayon? Ano yung forma? Pagagamitin natin yung BJT as a switch. Okay? For that, ito naman yung forma. Okay? We call this configuration the base bias. Base bias configuration wherein meron tayong voltage supplied to the base, VBB, which will pass to a, through a base resistor, RB. Okay? Then wala tayong emitter resistor. Yung emitter natin directly connected to the ground. And then we have this uh, supply, CC, connected to the collector and the collector resistor. For the calculations, ito yan. The characteristics, it has only few parts. Konti lang yung mga ginagamit ng mga components. Okay? Then beta dep dependent, meaning it relies on the beta. Kung mapapansin nyo dito, we have the formula. IC is equal to beta times IB. And it has a fixed phase current. Ning itong value na makukuha natin dito, automatic yan. Masasolve natin yung IB gamit itong formula na ito. And where it is used? Switch. Switch or digital circuits. Yung mga ones and zeros. Yung mga gumagamit ng ones and zeros na output. Okay? Logic circuits. Pwede natin gamitin itong particular configuration na ito. Again, this form this form can be used as a switch. Okay? Ito lang, sa lahat ng mga diniscuss natin na forma kanina or pattern kanina ng pag-connect sa, sa ating supply to our transistor and the resistors. Okay? Paano natin i-connect yung resistors and supply to our transistor? Okay? Ito lang yung nag-iisa na magagamit natin when we, will, when we want to use our BJT as a switch. Now, how do we use this in a real-life application? Okay, so now we will try to see a real-life example through a water overflow alarm system. Okay, meaning, pag nagka-overflow yung tanke, okay, mag-aalarma. In this case, meron tayong visual na alarm, okay, iilaw, indicating that there is an overflow in the, on our system. So here we have the schematic diagram of the water overflow alarm system. As what we can see here, we have this collector voltage, 9 volts. Okay? Then it is connected to a switch. Okay? And then connected to a 47 kilo ohm resistor. This is our base resistor. As it is connected to the base. And our emitter is connected to the ground. Okay? Then we have this LED. Then 1K resistor. Okay? The collector resistor. Now, if we observe this circuit configuration, this is actually similar to the base bias. And actually, this is a base bias configuration. Okay? So let's compare. This is the base bias configuration that was explained a while ago. Okay? So here, we have VCC and VBB. But in this particular circuit, okay, the VBB, okay, the VBB or the base voltage, is the same with the collector voltage. So para 
so that we will only use one power supply okay so we interconnected okay? instead of using another power supply for vbb okay? we use vcc as our okay as our power supply both to the base and the collector now we have the base resistor rb represented by 47 kilo ohms rc 1 kilo ohm and we have our emitter connected to the ground now the purpose of the light emitting diode here is it will serve as the visual indicator of our overflow okay and we will explain that later on so, uh, we will be showing the prototype okay and we will be explaining what will happen okay, to the circuit okay based on this particular circuit connection okay so here is the prototype we have here our battery 9 volts this is the 9 volts okay we have our switch okay so in this case our switch is actually these two wires okay so initially these two wires is not connected just like this particular switch it is not connected but when water okay in our tank so this particular beaker represents our tank when water okay gradually increases until such time that it reaches this level these two wires will be interconnected so meaning this switch will close when the water will touch this particular level meaning it will indicate that the tank is now in an overflow condition so in that case this particular switch will close allowing flow of current from the 9 volts passing through this switch passing through the water okay then going to the base resistor 47 kilo ohms then to the ground okay so there will be a closed circuit on our base okay or there will be a closed circuit on our input section of our transistor okay if there will be current that flows through our base then it follows that there will be current that flows to our okay output section or the collector section okay so if there is current that will flow to the collector section then this led will actually turn on okay and we will see that on the on the simulation okay let us go to the simulation so here we see our circuit okay so once the tank okay yung water level the water level on the tank it increases until such time that it will touch the two wires okay this will close and there will be flow of current here so now let's run the simulation okay open muna natin yung switch meaning uh, at this present moment the water is not touching the two wires okay on top of our tank or our beaker but when the water will touch the particular level okay this switch will close okay current will flow to our base and there will be base current so there will be also collector current this is the time our visual indicator or light emitting diode will actually lit up indicating that there is an overflow okay now let's try to measure the parameter okay what is the value of ib what is the value of collector current the base current notice the value of the voltage drop across the collector and emitter or VCE okay tingnan natin ano yung mga values na ito and to be able to do that okay so let's stop the simulation let's interconnect multi-testers okay so on electro 1 we learned na to be able to measure currents okay we actually have to disconnect an interconnection okay so for example this one if you want to measure the current that passes through the base okay disconnect natin yung connection and then we will put our multi-tester okay, in series with our circuit okay, so in this case instead na yung wire na yun yung mag interconnect to this particular connection papunta dito ito ng multi-tester and then this multi-tester will measure the current okay ayan we'll interconnect this one dito and ito naman dito sa kila for us to be able to measure the base current okay so let's run the simulation
Okay, so let's measure the current. Okay, so what we can see here, the current is actually 176.93 microampere. So U here stands for micro, meaning times 10 raised to negative 6. Okay, so this is when the the water actually touches that particular level. Okay, yung overflow condition. But if it does not touch that particular level, okay, pansinin nyo itong LED, okay, and this particular current. Tignan natin yung value. This is open. The LED will not light up, meaning it's not in overflow condition. At the same time, the current through our base, the current through our base is actually very minimal. Nanoampere, this is close to zero. Okay, we can assume that this is zero. Since there is no flow of current since okay, it is disconnected by this particular switch. Okay? So 85.27 nanoamperes or zero. Okay? So now, what about, so we have already measured the base current. What about the collector current? What is the current that passes through this particular circuit? Okay? Again, we will, we will interconnect. A multi-tester, stop the simulation, will interconnect a multi-tester in series, okay? Or multi-tester So we will run the simulation This is, we will be measuring current, DC current here we will be measuring the current also. Once this switch closes, indicating an overflow, the current that passes through our okay, first multimeter XMM1, XMM1 is 176.93 microampere. But on the collector side, okay, it's actually 7.13 milliampere or times 10 raised to negative 3, okay? So, if we open a calculator, so here if we open our calculator and divide this particular value, 7.132 milliampere to 176.93 microampere, we will be able to calculate our beta value. Okay, so in this case, the beta value is approximately 40. The the collector current is actually 40 times that of the base current. Okay, so that's what happened here. And then, okay, so we can also see here if we try to measure the emitter current. Okay, so disconnect natin to. Mission disconnect. Try to interconnect another multimeter. Multi-tester. This is our third multi-tester. Let's run the simulation. Okay. What I would like you to see here is that the emitter current, 7.309 milliamperes. Well, here it's 7.132 mA. Okay, meaning the emitter current, the current that flows through the emitter greater than the collector current because as what we have discussed previously previous video sinabi natin doon that the emitter is actually the most heavily doped of all the transistors parts okay? since this is the most heavily doped okay, it is 7.309 milliampere or actually the value of this is beta plus 1 meaning 40 plus 1 so 41 times the base current that's actually the value of our emitter current. Okay? So that's, yan yung gusto natin i-emphasize dito. Now we stop the simulation. And then, we'll try to measure now, okay, what about the value of VCE? Okay? Let's try to measure the value of the voltage across the collector and the emitter. So the fourth, C then here E. Okay, we run the simulation. 
open this one so here we have the VCE value of 95.261 millivolts 95.261 millivolts is equivalent to 0 0.095 0 0.095 or 0 0.1 volt so that's very minimal value of the voltage okay so the VCE here is 0 0.1 volt so this is the characteristic of a BJT used as a switch the value across VCE must be low okay kaya 0 0.1 volt yan kasi it is used as a switch Yung typical switch natin class, yung switch na pinipindot natin, yung ideal value niyan is dapat wala talagang voltage drop. Since a switch is just a wire, and wires have very minimal, okay, napakaliit ng resistance niyan, close to zero. So, marapat lang na yung DJT, when used as a switch, kailangan mamimik niya or, or similar yung characteristic niya sa isang switch din, na dapat walang voltage drop. In this case, Kaya mababa value. Lalaman natin class na mali yung biasing natin or mali yung resistors na ginamit natin okay? kapag yung value ng VCE is high. Yung value ng VCE is high meaning it is not working as a switch even if the LED is lighting up. Okay, again, switches must have low voltage drop. Okay? When DJT is used as a switch, the value of the VCE must be less than okay, 0 0.2. In this case, it's 0 0.1. Okay? These are the parameters of our BJT. The IB, the IC, the I, and the IE, and the VCT. Okay? Now, you may, you may be able to check these values using the formulas kanina. If we try to go back on our slide presentation, this particular slide, we see the calculations here. So, so you try to use this particular formulas. Okay? The value of VBB is 9 volts, 0 0.7. The RB is 47K. The value of IB, is it the same with that in the video or the simulation? Next, we have the beta value, 40. Okay? Then you have already solved IB here. So you will be able to solve IC. Is it the same with what we have okay, arrived at the particular relation? Lastly, PCC is 9 volts. Okay? Our IC okay, is na solved natin kanina dito. And then RC is 1K. So, dito lang class, dagdagan nyo lang ng minus 1.2. We have an LED. Okay? So, para makalculate natin yung VCE. So, is it the same? 0 0.1 ba? Kiting na natin. Those are the simulation, simulated values. Ito naman yung theoretical solution. Compare natin. And iba pa, pa, iba pa talaga during actual. Okay? Uh, actual yung magbe-measure talaga. Okay? So yun yung mga... Uh, this is how BJT is used as a switch. Okay? And also as an amplifier. So again... Yung mga em, uh, binigyan natin ng emphasis dito is the forma, pattern. Ano yung pagkakonekta ng mga voltahe, ng mga resistors, ating transistor, for us to be able to know kung amplifier ba yan or switch. Same time solution. The same time yung simulation. Magkoko-inside ba yung theoretical analysis natin sa actual. Especially kung nagbe-measure na tayo. Those are the discussion on BJT switch. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed. And ring the notification that you will be updated on our latest upload. As always, see you in the next one.